And how old is that house? That may be 10 years ago, 10 years ago. Right, very long time. Hello. My name is Wojtek Bobilewicz. I come from Poland. I arrived to Solomon Islands to find out something about the way the local people live and also to find out something about the legends or myths, as the scientists call them, uh, regarding giants and lights in Solomon Islands. And I believe these are not legends uh, or myths. This is a true story. With me is the chief of the Chapuru village, Joseph Jepper, a very wise and uh, well-educated man who helps us with our research and who can tell us uh, a number of very interesting stories today. Joseph, uh, here we are in this very nice village of Chapuru and uh, I know you are the chief of this village and you've told us a lot of exciting stories. So we are first of all interested in your like ancestors because you told us you had ancestors back in the times when there was head hunting here and cannibalism. Could you tell us a few words about it? Yes, exactly. Um, for my history, I uh, originally from Tangarare, and during there is a, a tribal war in the late 17th and 16th centuries. My great grandmothers had moved from that place to these areas. And they live here with a lot of our warriors. And later on, and some of our people come and collect my mother's bag. And then we live there. And during all those, all, also during that time, the, uh, during that black, uh, sorry, the tribal history, tribal war, they also killed my great grandfather, which is the, he's the original leader of our home there, back at Tangare. Mm -hmm. Then. Yes, they killed him. They put him on top. They stood on top of stone. Then later, these uh, warriors. That is, uh, I believe, is AD, at the end of 18th century. That is during the time when the Australian government have set back all these uh, people that work in those plantations during that time. Mm -hmm. okay. And then it because of uh, these warriors have jealousy to him, but because he is a red warrior, and they collected all these warriors from that part of the island. And with them, there is a kind of gun which is the British always use it before in Australia. They put the bullets in front of it and they strike it to make it stronger. Then they shoot, with, shoot it with my grandfather, which is they strike his right hand with his. He drops his weapon and yes. Then later they kill him, cut him snake off, and they cut him to pieces and they share his body and eat his meats and drink his blood and also. During the time uh, when the Queensland, uh, the, from Queensland back, and they also sent one of my my, that, that re my relatives, also my grandfather's relatives, my, or maybe his cousin, and uh, he was back at Solomon Islands, but he come to different islands, he's he living at Gela. Mm -hmm. Then some, two of his nephew sent news to him and said to him that, oh, well, you come back to our village and our home, and you set up peace there. So there are the men named Biku, on his way up, he took with him monies and also a, 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 a sax, which we're now calling, we uh, call tanda. Mm -hmm. Then that tanda led him back to set peace in our area. And from the time there is no tribal war till now. Right. And then my mother was s still staying here until we were born and we live here. Mm -hmm. And also during all those times, our great hunters and all our warriors have been set from the Dutch coastland from the western side to the eastern side of the island. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, one of my great, also great grandfather, really great grandfather, is on his way to the Sala areas, where he lives until he comes to that Verbal area. And also he lives here at Tipuru. Mm -hmm. And uh, he also built the shrine up in the mountains that we have seen. Right. Right. And by his name is Chipuna. Tipuru is one of the the first village among any village in this coastland where many people are living in during the 16th and 17th centuries. Mm -hmm. And then what actually happened, these people from village, uh, Chapur village moved from every villages in this area like from Tanasari, Takabur areas, uh, eastern side and some people moved western side of the island, they are also from Chapur. But what actually happened in Chapur, there is uh, some like uh, 
the tribal wars have been happened before, and even the giants have struck this village also, and the people have died in other sicknesses. So now we start to come up again, uh, regroup again to come back to this village and to set up this village. That is why we have left with few new families here. So you can find out here in Chapuru there is not a single old man under 60s and mm. from 60 up to 80 something. Mm -hmm. all, all the new people. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. right, um, we got water supplies mm -hmm. from the ministry have supplied us some water supplies. We have two, many water supply, two supplies here. And for us here in the next village like we in the upper bush here, uh, we use some temporary pipes. We built our dams and cement but we made it temporary. And then the big village, they use uh, the pipe being supplied by the ministry responsible for water authorities. Mm -hmm. And then also we use, uh, in terms of uh, light and all those, some of our houses use the lantern. And uh, for nowadays, uh, we use uh, solar panels. Some okay. of the houses solar panels. And even generators also. Mm -hmm. Whereas Chapuru is also a mixed people village, like the people from the other island, like especially Savo, and also Gela. And some uh, Polynesian people also came in here, mm -hmm. and then they stayed here, married so to our, mm -hmm. our people here, and then we like we are, we are mixed people. Mm -hmm. And also in terms of Christianity, we also mix in religions. Mm -hmm. uh, some of other denominations within Christianity are also mm -hmm. with us here. Mm -hmm. It's maybe in ten years' time we do believe that this village must be w will be a bigger, big village right. when this little tyrant grows up and. Yeah. Maybe this village will be a big village. Uh, when you were discussing your ancestors and the village of Chapuru, you also said uh, something, you mentioned something about giants. Could you explain to us who or what giants are and what uh, major types of giants exist? Right, 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 exactly. There there were three types of giants, in, especially in Guadalcanal. One is a kind of small type of uh, human form-like, and also another one is a kind of like a real human being, kind of in, in on our height. Another one is a very huge one, it's a very big one, that uh, is also c can become invisible. So those three types of giants are living right in Guadalcanal. Well, uh, describe is, uh, to describe them is, uh, to me, it's simply like he, the gorilla bo face and bodies and with a type of uh, power pull type of the gorillas. And because they are very strong type of, uh, let's call them animals, something, or homoid or what, uh, so ever, they can carry even very heavy logs and break down the trees and all those things like that. Even the humans, they can carry humans with their bare hands and carry them to the mountains, those very steepy mountains. They are not so too intelligent, intelligent uh, yeah, because uh, what actually happened to them is they only have two mindsets. One is to think of about what to eat, another one is to have sex, to have to reproduce, that's all. And then they are not really friendly. And that's how the way they think. In Guadalcanal the giant is really exist. And that uh, is really living in uh, caves under the Mount Tatuve, which is the the uh, the, the topest uh, point here in the Golden Canal, the highest peak in the Golden Canal. Where is uh, in many coastlines in the eastern side of the island, they have the uh, tunnel entrance to that place, which is easily, we can see them, that in the tunnel. But the giant, because of they have, uh, like, uh, the part relationship with the hum real human beings, and the human beings, the home people believe that the, the ancestors are coming from that uh, type of people. Or well, then we must have to go through them, by asking them permissions, and even they themselves, their clan themselves, within those giants, can lead us to this place where they live, but they are really existing in the Golden Canal. So they have a big cities, I believe, in that place. Even in history, we heard about Lati Makone, and he was uh, one of the king of the giant right now, living in the same cave with those other giants. Okay, Joseph, uh, I have some more questions concerning these very strange things because everybody needs to admit that stories about giants are very hard to believe because in Europe, in, in other Western countries, people say it's only legends or myths. 
but I heard that giants are actually not the only mystery of Solomon Islands right. and mm. that uh, over here in this area and o even over Chapuru and in the sea nearby uh, people sometimes uh, see kind of strange lights can you tell us a few words about those lights what they are what do you think and when when you can see them and where right right, right. good here's the, the light is we see light very often like the light is always appearing the same place and the same time at night and also it flows the same directions every time we, we saw it and uh, it exactly comes out from the horizons in the same directions out here at, if you go to the beach at Chapuru mm -hmm. and uh, there is a point here Chapuru here and they always visit it, you know the place so they are somewhere over right, there? right, near the beach there okay, okay. or if for a good view we just we can climb up the steep of the hill there and just uh, near the sea and we just can see it mm -hmm. during the night but most of the time it can fly, it comes, we can show it during the very dark night mm -hmm. and the dark nights you're not mooning and then you see it flies from the same place right. but it always comes that uh, these things uh, since uh, we come to grow we also saw it but something really surprising us is because it flies there every the same direction every time and uh, we also had, uh, not had some of our boys here, some of our village fishermen also have seen it and they feel it lights that it strikes them when it, it saw then he hover upon them then they feel such light very hot very the heat of the light very hot so some of these uh, boys had dropped themselves in the water so they hide themselves under the canoe and also the same incident of that light happens to one of our relatives and even been admitted to the hospital and also similar incident happened to one of our friends too been swimming in the pool up on that mountains, we believe that is Mount Dragon, we call it Dragon. And then that lights come and it comes like an, not the light, but it comes like an moving object. It's an object hovering him and he dives under the water and then later he comes out and you see nothing. Mm. So that is, we call it mysteries because we do see it every two nights. Mm. We don't really, I, I cannot really tell what exactly can be because uh, many people of the Solomon Island think about the spirit. Mm. And then we have a question ourselves because if it is spirit, why did it signals given a so is something under it, mm. and it have a hit when it uh, shines upon the people, mm. and also many people are missing in the past uh, in the past years. We understand when we, we remember, mm -hmm. so we don't blame the, the, that the light did it, but we have to like uh, we think about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here at Chapuru is a very nice viewpoint of seeing the light, so that uh, you, we can, you can see clearly mm. how it rises and how it flows into the jungles, right. to the bottom of those mountains. Mm. Right. Right. Like the giant is uh, uh, like an, what we say could be, I could say an animal, so I name it animal like, and uh, this light is a different form of things, mm -hmm. even we don't know about it, mm. but we just manage, to, we just happen to see it, mm. we've seen these oceans flying every two nights and mm. Even, t even when we go for a dive or spear fishing, mm -hmm. and then even our fishermen they saw, they must have to go to a shore because they are afraid of, mm. of that light. It seems like Guadalcanal and uh, Solomon Islands in general is mm. really a place full of mysteries, unsolved, uh, uh, very strange uh, issues and things. And I've heard about one more, and uh, I know uh, the island of Makira is especially known, but in Guadalcanal also uh, I heard there are some uh, creatures like they, they call them Kakamora, or they, they ascribe many other names to the small, kind of small people. Can you tell us a few words about those small people? Well, that's a real true story. And it's written down in the history of this island, because Kakamora is... Uh, the people of Makira is really well known since the government formed the Solomons as uh, Kakamora because that type of people is really uh, existing in Makira and also in Guadalcanal uh, some incident happened or the people have been caught and then they bring them to Honera in the 18th and, and sorry in the 19th and also the people of the public in Honera saw those type of people and in Makura, Mak Makira sorry it's a real story that this Place uh, these people here still exist in Makira. Mm -hmm. They look like a human being, but they're very small in size. Mm. Even even if they can go under the houses at night, and they can go walk very fast. Those at Makira can go very fast, mm -hmm. and they automatically disappear when these 
they moves. They're, lo- they're in a form of a human beings, mm-hmm. human beings, but uh, we don't really uh, take them in close range and mm-hmm. see them clearly. Maybe they have how many? They have still have five fingers, but mm-hmm. maybe very small fingers. Right. Right, and then they're very small people, mm-hmm. but they do sex with them they, themselves, and mm-hmm. maybe they have kids. That's why there are so many. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're uh, in one, one or two foot. These people always live in the central central of the islands, and they must be the form of creatures that they've been here before any normal human beings are in this island. Mm-hmm. That's what I believe. Mm-hmm. They are living also in the eastern island, eastern part of the island, mm-hmm. because that is a very very flat land. It's mm-hmm. a plain, so they can live in those plains and those very big mountain range, mm-hmm. similar to, uh, like com- compared to our mountains, yes, it's too sloppy, mm-hmm. and then they, those people cannot live mm-hmm. really happy on this type of uh, mountains like this, on our coastline. Mm-hmm. But they live mostly on those areas, mm-hmm. and then um, I do have a proof of it. I had uh, one of our relatives been married to this area, telling us that um, there is a group of kind of small people cutting his timber after he cut them, keep them in the bush and, and stockpile them. And this type of small people come and throw them away by night. And they also hate it that night that the, the timber is banging, but they don't know what happened. So up in the morning they saw the timber, they saw very short footprint, very small footprint, mm-hmm. similar to baby's footprint. A footprint so. And uh, that is re- I really I thought that this thing must be here before any human beings uh, arrive in this uh, mm-hmm. islands. Right. Okay, thank you very All much. Right. But with me is also Warren Aston, a traveler, a researcher, who, just like me, is interested in all sorts of strange and inexplicable phenomena, and is very much interested in the culture of Solomon Islands and the unknown phenomena. So Warren, what brings you here to Solomon Islands? Uh, The same things. It's a very undeveloped, remote place, uh, least developed in the Pacific, and because of that I think a lot of these things have not been taken seriously. And so it's a fantastic opportunity for us to come and find out more about them. I don't know if definitive answers are possible at this point, but we will try, and at the very least we will come away knowing more than we did. That's what you expect uh, from your visit in Solomon Islands. Yes. Right. So you believe these uh, stories about giant lights and small people and ruins, they have, uh, they are grounded in... Well, really, there's no reason to um, even query the lights. I mean, UFOs are reported worldwide and there's no reason, in fact, there's very good reasons why this would be an attractive operations base. Uh, you know, for this whole part of the planet. Um, You're in a remote area, very little chance of any disturbance. Um, You have all the facilities. Um, Right. Yes, the very fact that it's remote. Mm. So what uh, do you, like, expect most from this trip? What is your priority number one? What would you like to really... I I think something tangible, something physical uh, that would support the idea that there are still lost races, I prefer to call them, uh, or lost tribes uh, living here in the interior. Uh, Absolutely no reason why not. And uh, the whole story of the hobbits in uh, Flores, in the Indonesian islands, tells us that it's no fantasy and very likely is a link to at least one of these groups of people and of course they were very small but um, there's also no reason why they couldn't be larger species right and uh, if we could find some tangible evidence uh, uh, bones um, skulls something that's clearly larger than human or clearly smaller than human uh, that would be a major development. Let's hope that's what's going, what is going to happen here. Yeah. Let's hope. Well, it we will happen one day. Uh, yeah. um, it's one of these situations where you probably have to put a lot of time and effort into it, and um, and of course that requires funding. So 
It's also difficult in that respect because our funding is is very small. Right. And there's only two of us. Right. But we're going to push ahead and do whatever we can that will move us ahead.